Good morning and welcome again to our series, Fine Poetry, poems that touch deeper chords. Today, James Cousins, part three. The Cross and the Book to the memory of Annie Pillou. Here we have raised, rough-hewn, our granite cross, and set her name upon a marble book, open forever, where the solemn rook sways on the branch that mountain breezes toss. And when the twilight shadows take the gloss from day's pale cheek, O oh, you who, pausing, look, say, For the love she gave, great love she took. Lo, here in dust are wedded gain and loss, For us a tear, for her, O oh, music make. Death has unclothed from vesture of decay the shining self that knows not death or birth. She is not here, yet here for love's sweet sake. Stand cross and book to mark the honored clay that holds the form she honored once on earth. Softly as comes a wind across the sea and thrills the waves to music on the beach and stirs the trees to whispering each to each and bids the birds to scatter songs of glee so, in the heart's deep quiet, came to me Nayev the fair, Nayev the wise. Her speech exhaled a lineage longer than the reach of memory, older than all thrones that be, and calls on me to wear with quenchless eyes, she with the deathless dwells and folds her wings enthroned in vast unutterable peace. <clears throat> A hymn to hidden loveliness. Whose is that voice? whose far sweet sound within the soul moves strangely near, calling and calling, yet is drowned. Whose is that face, whose instant sight pales the moist evening's crimson sky with something clearer than the light, and yet eludes the swiftest eye. Whose is the hand whose white cool fire shakes the rapt body overmuch with pangs of infinite desire, yet slips beyond the keenest touch? Spirit of hidden loveliness, Thine is the voice, the face, the hand. Thine is the all-compelling stress, and thine the swift, shape-changing wand. Yet, though of thee I have not sight, my heart before the rose cries, Thus, she too, and more, 
Yea, seen aright all things of her are rumorous. For she, beyond the nights and days, has set the spinning orbs astir, and life by straight or crooked ways is slowly rounded home to her. So, none the more my hands would close, adoring dawnwards, calm and clear, than when along the whirlwind goes the dream and work of many a year, nor less give thanks where poppies blaze, destruction bears through corn and fence, than when her garden sister sways in orient grandiloquence. Let love to love a vowel make. With thee alone each heart keeps tryst. Thy lips moved when the Buddha spake. Thy gleam was on the face of Christ. And in my vibrant flesh and brain, where dark and light are subtly blent, thy fingers leave a rosy stain of joy in utter discontent. For past the hunger of the heart, made mute by throbbing lips or limbs, insatiably thou movest apart. I follow where the flaming dims from off the hearth of life and where the strident glories of the storm are folded in unruffled air. I seek thine essence past the form and dare not, though the pulses ache, drop flight to kiss the fleetest wing, nor for a heartbeat more forsake the lovely for the loveliest thing. But cry, O thou whose quenchless gaze shall burn the dross from earth and sky, take me and fill me, that thy blaze destroy me not, but purify. The Mill One thing forever fixed is set, the love between us two. Though thoughts revolved and friends forget, and old give place to new. So as between this stone that stands and this that moves so fleet, Life sifts our harvest through his hands and grinds it like the wheat. The coin. A beggar, through the fields I passed, craving some boon to solace grief. And nature blew a laugh and cast into my hat a withered leaf. Now I, the young and gay, will join and spend my wealth and sing in glee because of that exhaustless coin that spend thrift nature through to me.